Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And this is where I start to sing. Wait a minute, let me go to my camera so you can all see me. Hello, folks. Oh, yes, it's Friday. It's the end of our week, and of course, uh, that must mean that uh, part of the ugliness of Friday is, of course, look at them. Just look in the camera what did you and say, say hello. The, the ugliness? The ugliness of Fridays is... Oh, that's is, is, real is, nice. Huh? That's well, nice. I, I'm ugly. Yeah? Uh, no, actually, you're not ugly. You're prettier than I am. Well. <laughs> that, oh, that is the same much? Well, if people will look, you know, I went out and had the bags under my eyes taken care of this week. Let me so see. Wow. It's so really is amazing. Huh? Yeah. They still got the dewlap here. I look like an iguana, you know. <laughs> So anyway, move your cap up so they can see your face. You you bring it down so low that they can't see your face, Hi. and not that anybody wants to. You know, you're itching for I'm, a night. I'm, 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 yeah, we're wearing uh, matching outfits. We're we're like that couple you hate who wear matching outfits. I've got my Pixar uh, pullover, and you, what is this called? This is a a hoodie. This is a hoodie. It, uh, yeah. But I was wearing mine first. And yours is a Pixar. Well, I thought you were wearing the other one. I no, thought you were wearing the, the Tahoe. One. I washed the other one. You washed the other one. Oh, this one I don't think has ever been washed, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Don't try to smell it, folks. Don't after. try to smell him. Oh, so he changes that's his it, underpants huh? once a week? No, I changed them many times. I threw at least three underpants in there. Well, it's interesting. Well, I don't know. Only one pair came out. What do you out. do? You take them over there and you eat them? Uh, only one pair came out of the dryer. Really? Yeah. You yeah. saw it. Well, I change them whenever I shower. And? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only reason you ever shower is because you go to work out and so you have to shower after that, right? Actually, I don't. <laughs> I wait until Monday. You know the trouble with this whole thing about... Me being retired. <laughs> retarded? I mean, I am retired, I guess. Retarded, huh? did you say? Re retarded. 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 Uh, retired, retarded. Is that you forget when you took a shower last. Or when you got when, out of your pajamas you know, No, when, you, when, you, when I used to get up in the morning to go to work, I would hop in the shower because it would wake me up, right? But now, I, you know, I don't, sometimes I don't even get out of my pajamas. Tell me about it. Well, you don't when we're here all day on a Saturday or Sunday. You don't. I am out in the morning at 6 o'clock. Mm. So don't tell me I don't get out. Oh, yeah, out. you go out. You go over to work out. Yeah, tomorrow's Stu Leonard's. Oh, we're going to Stu Leonard's tomorrow? Are you going? Yeah, I want to go to Stu Leonard's. I like Stu Leonard's. I like him there. I really like him. We're going him. at 11. The only thing is I can't take full advantage of Stu Leonard's because what happens is if you buy something, they give you a free ice cream cone. Yes, a hundred dollars to get a free. Now ice cream. I used to have. I had a, a deal. I, I was doing, on, you know, my radio show in San Francisco. Uh, Harvey, who was Gary's brother, passed a while back, uh, opened up with Gary's aid a cell phone store called Phonetics, and they bought advertising on my show. And right next door was this uh, was this ice cream store. So I said, why don't you do a deal where when somebody buys a phone, you give them a thing and they can go next door and get a cone. I did that years ago, probably before Stu Leonard ever did it. And? And so I came up with the quote, buy a phone, get a cone. <laughs> and everybody who came in and bought a phone, they wanted their coupon so they could go next door and get the uh, get the cone. cone. Yeah. That's great story. And we, we he's, no, I, I made that place a bloody hit. That's when I used to be a big shot. When you used to be a... That's when I did something any anybody cared, you know. <laughs> uh, how many people we got watching? Oh, it's getting good. It's getting good. See, you you, you draw them in. I draw and, them and, in. And after you leave it uh, at uh, the 30-minute mark, I lose them. Which, by the way... What? It's 10-10, but I'm just saying... No, you, 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 I'm just... just don't, I don't want another time signal for another 15, <laughs> 20 minutes. I'm just okay? saying. Your eyes look great. Huh? Your eyes look great. Yeah, they do. Look in the mirror. 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I can also look at myself here, and I can see oh. that my eyes are, are better than they were. Yes, you know. they are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let people, I mean, let, let me tell you, do a close-up of me, and you can all see. see. See my eyes, which are normally baggy? They're not, because we use, what, the magic elixir? What is that stuff? Mud. It's it's a mud. It's a mud base. Mud titans. You know why? Because you part, apparently you didn't put the top top on it. No no no. It just because there was stuff in the t in the in the thing. So that just yeah. Well, I came in. I put something the in there, and then yeah. a, a little glump of it came out that we couldn't use. It's gonna have to be like that every time. Yeah. Well, uh, you. You get, you got it, but for yourself. But you decided you don't want to use it. No, it's drying. It, it's only good for a couple hours. A couple hours. Yeah. If I want to go in and wash my face right now, I've got bags back in my eyes. And the only problem is, I need to have these lids picked up. The, that operation we were talking about that they said could be taken care of by Medicare because of of it's it's medical it's a medical condition. And if if that, my eyes were then open like this, then uh, it would look good. Instead, everything looks better in that area, but the eyelids are still drooping. So. Well, everything kind of drops as you Every, get older. Oh, fuck gravity, you know? <laughs> Whoever in the God Gravi who invented gravity, gravity right? Gravity takes over. Mm. I'm having my Major Dickinson's tonight. Good. Don't or spill Major it. Dickinson's, don't I think spill it. Yeah. No, I don't. I'm, I'm, you don't? I'm very careful. No, I did one. I night. can recall. One night I did, and. The keyboard wouldn't work anymore. But all you have to do, if you ever spill anything in your keyboard, the hint is it won't work. Just let it dry for like 24 hours. And once it's dry, it's good to go again. So that's what happened here. I got a little mud on this one. With that mud I have stuff. toothpaste on mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, well, she comes in in the morning and she brushes her teeth while pounding on the computer. And always there's like... Why don't you? I, no, no, no. Uh, sometimes I clean them up. You have a ruler there, and on the ruler is some of the toothpaste. Here, hand me the ruler so I can so show everybody. Here, look, folks. This is this is her toothpaste right there. See that? See those <laughs> two little things there? You see? The uh, people who are are just listening to the radio have no idea what I'm talking about. Which is just as well. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you were watching the Olympics. Uh, the opening ceremony. The opening ceremony. Here's what we did. Uh, because we really find NBC obnoxious. Okay? Yeah. Uh, because you watch the opening ceremonies, boom. You get, get come, We'll be back after this commercial break. And they go to a commercial break. Every three minutes. Every You know, and then they come back and they show some more. And, you know, but the Olympics, the opening ceremonies happen... What, about 11 hours, 13 hours ago. It's like a 13-hour difference or something between here and Sochi. Or uh, not Sochi, uh, uh, so Pyong, Yang, Pyong, 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 whatever it is, Pyongyang. Pyong, 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 Pyong. And so I said, well, if I go online, I bet I can find the BBC coverage of it <laughs> because they're already probably already broadcasted six hours ago, right? So I went over there, and sure enough, I got there it. Was. And so we just started watching the British version, With the no BBC version. And it doesn't have commercials. And I was timing from the time we started to the end. We were, they were back 20 minutes here by the time I left the room. So Well, theirs is three hours. Theirs is three hours. Is two. It was two, uh, two, uh, 230, something like 230, 225, 221. That so was it. A half an hour difference. So they throw in 40 minutes worth of commercials during the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, so, and all they have to do is stop tape, you know, because it's already recorded. So, anyway. Uh, but outside of having the British announcers, which weren't bad, you know. Uh, and the fact that I did watch a little of the American version when the Americans came, they had their own special cameras. Everything else was pool coverage. It's, it's exactly the same stuff because they get it all from the same pool coverage. But NBC had their own cameras there so they could go up and take pictures of the American team while all these other countries are going by and they're not saying, hey, there goes Moldova. <laughs> where, by the way, where is Moldova? I don't you know? know. There were a couple countries. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me look it up. I, I, this really bothered me because they went Moldova and I went, I don't know what part of the world Moldova is in. Okay. Am I an idiot or am I... Uh, or do I just not care? I thought I was a worldly person. Moldova. Okay. Is a Moldova restaurant. Let's see here. Moldova. Okay. 
officially the Republic of Moldova, it was the Romanian Republic of Moldova, about, now let's see here, it doesn't say where it is. Yeah, there's a map on the right. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's all, it's right next to Romania. Okay, there you go. Right, which is right under and right under the what it was the USSR and is now, of course, uh, Russia. Uh, so yeah, and its largest city is Chisinau. So now you know where Moldova is. I I wondered where Moldova was. There's a whole batch of countries I've never heard. Like what? I can't remember. That there was a whole batch that only had one athlete. <laughs> that only had one athlete. Yeah, there are about four or five countries that only had one athlete that were holding the flag. Really? Yeah. Really. Oh, okay. Which was the one that was the smallest that we saw there of the of the, of the people of the countries? There were four or five that all were small that just had one athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had like one athlete. Yeah. and that was it. Yeah. Was, no, was there one with one athlete? Yeah, there were about five or six with one athlete. Really? Yeah. Well, some of those countries are like in areas where they're not going to ski. You know, they're not going to go in for Like Bermuda them. was there in their Bermuda shorts. But, yeah, yeah. Know. And there were three of them, and one of them was a really old guy. Well, he could have been a uh, coach. Like a coach or something. Are you allowed to let your coach walk with you? I don't know. Now, when the United States came on, uh, I'm, I'm just strong. getting some stuff together. 300 strong. It's like... We're ganging up on all the other countries no, to win. Well, Canada was, had a big chunk. Well, they not as many as we had. They had about a hundred, maybe, but we had like three hundred people there. And of course, if those three hundred people are going to compete, we have a better chance of walking away with gold, right? For nothing. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, 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 um, our vice president Pence was there. Why didn't uh, Why didn't Trump go? I guess because he didn't want to be yelled at by the rest of the world. Probably. Right. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't go, uh, but Pence was there, and Pence was seated right in front of Kim Jong-un's sister. sister. And while, while everyone, including, see, the thing that's great about this is North Korea and South Korea have combined to have one team called and, Korea. And their flag was um, a white background and a red picture of the, of the countries, both countries. Both just countries. One, but just one, no break or anything. Yeah, just, and this, that's wonderful. Yeah. That, you know, what? It, 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 if anything, North Korea was acting in the best spirit of these games, which is you take a pause in your warring and your hatred for each other and you compete. And mm -hmm. you compete, and they're competing together, yeah, in, as one team, yeah. And I think it's wonderful. And the and the uh, president of uh, South Korea got up and walked back and shook uh, Kim Jong Un's sister's hand mm -hmm. and everything. Pence didn't even look at her. <laughs> now it would have been nice for him to turn around, for him to just hands. turn around and, and acknowledge, acknowledge her. her, shake hands with her, and just say, uh, "I'm." You know, Mike Pence, I'm Vice President of the United States, uh, and I just wanted to say hello, you know, because it's in the spirit of the games. But no, fuck the spirit of the games. We're going to bring our, our... In fact, Pence was interviewed earlier today on NBC, and he was going, well, I think the world should not forget the terrible... Uh, 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 what do you call it? The terribleness of, of uh, North Korea and the way they treat their people and blah, blah, blah. And that they have to know that even here. And I'm going, that's not what the games are about. The games are for suspending any hatreds, any dislikes, any enmity that you might have. And, and together in spirit, get together as a world. It's like you know? during World War I where they all stopped and celebrated yeah. Christmas. And they, they shared booze. You know, so <laughs> and, and then he, they go back to so war. So he was there in Pyongyang trying to stir up the pot. Yeah. And that's terrible. Yeah. It's horrible. But uh, anyway, you know. Um, I'm tired. Do I bore you? I'm just saying. I bore you. Well, uh, no. Now, another thing today, that, did you hear about Trump, the latest Trump? I was just reading. Trumpy yeah. deal? Yeah. yeah. What an asshole. Uh, he will not allow the Democratic memo to, to be, be released. released. See, it's up to the president to do it because both of these memos are considered confidential, and the only person that can make them known is the president of the United States. The House can override it. The House can override it? They can make changes, and they, they can override it as a group. 
But I doubt they'll do I'll that. I doubt they'll do that. Yeah. He should have in the spirit of everything. Well, there's no spirit about it. He doesn't him. want people to read the, the other opinion of what went on. Of course. Okay. And uh, so that's pretty terrible. So anyway. So uh, today we made back some money. Uh, the stock market rebounded vigorously with what would have been a good market. But considering what the slaughter that's gone on for the last two weeks, it's like a piss in the fucking ocean. But I think it was up like 350 points or something. I got money yesterday, remember? Oh, listen to her. Listen <laughs> to her. I'm, in fact, I'm jealous about this. Tell them, tell well, them what I happened. I forget the, 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 the little Well, you don't have software. to get it. Just tell them what happened. Well, when Alex was See, talking about... Well, I went to Credit Karma. Right, you went to Credit Karma. And you got three? I found three? That, I found, three? That I, I found uh, two, two. I think two. I found out that I was owed some money, so I went and I looked, and sure and enough, there were, a couple right of, on there. there were a couple of refunds from like Western Digital or something I never applied for, and supposedly I was due. So the state of California keeps I'm not that sure money. I, I didn't talk to you. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Siri. <laughs> What's that all about? Anyway, so uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so um, uh, I I got I think, God, I got one check for like a hundred dollars, another one for about thirty or forty or something. You know, not, just found money. That's yeah. nice. So she finds out that she's she goes to it and finds out she's owed some money. So she just applies for it in New York State, right? right. Tell them how much you made. It was what, about 300? First one, one of them was... 200 and something. 200 and change. One was 100 and something. I and think we figured you made about 350 bucks. Yeah, not bad. In refunds. Not yeah. bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all, but now I'm jealous. Is there any bet I can make you or something Well, you win? could try New York. You only tried no, California. No, 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 no. I went on there and they said, here are the various states where you may have, you know, these are the various claims around but under you did your New name. York? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I looked in New York and I didn't have any listings. At all. I only did New York. I didn't do D.C. Yours was for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Shield. Which had to be a long time ago because when was the last time you had Blue Cross Blue Shield? I don't remember. You know, I mean. Um, one was from, what was the other ones from? was Blue Cross Blue Shield, and then there was something from someone that looked like a travel agency or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But then what was the third? I think it was also medical. Medical. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. Y y yeah, but I'm wondering what the exact refund was for. I mean, did the Blue Cross Blue, Blue, Cross Blue Shield cheat you out of some money or something? Or, or? or a refund that I never cashed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That could be. Yeah. That could be, but it would have to be a long time ago. Well, obviously. Because I, you don't remember when did you have Blue, Blue Cross Blue Shield last? I don't remember. Was it? It had to be when you were in New York. So that had, yeah, that had to. Do. Yeah. And if, probably at the, whatever that job you were at, that place where I for, when I first met you, you were working. Did they have Blue Cross Blue Shield? No, they didn't have insurance, and I was oh. just a part time. Oh, I see. Oh. oh, oh, at the at the at the architects. Yeah. Uh, did we have insurance? It's interesting. No, no. We're getting new insurance. Yes, we are. I, uh, uh, we, we, we have suffered for the longest time with the insurance that she has, uh, because you have at work you have Oxford, and we're she's and my company pays a hundred percent. She's Medicare, I'm Medicare, but we at work she got Oxford the full deal, right? And here, here's where Oxford I think was ripping them off. You get the full deal, but the thing is, because we're Medicare and there are only four people in this plan, because we're the small Medicare office, becomes our primary, primary by and, law, and the other insurance becomes our secondary. Which means that they're paying um, just for the twenty percent, twenty-one thousand dollars a year. Well, they charge my company as if we were like full time, full full the, payment. Yeah, yeah. And um, I asked our agent, and he said they do it because small companies they get like a flat package. You know what I mean? There's no exceptions yeah. or yeah. anything in it. But if so, what happened? Is she, went, she went to her. She went to her her bosses and said, "Look, why don't you pay for um, sag? Why don't you pay for for this? You're going to save nineteen thousand dollars a year." I wish they'd give that to me. Yeah, and they and they there was no gripe, and uh, yeah. So from here on in, they're going to pay for the uh, quarterly, the quarterly, which we get. 
on the old one, I had like a thousand dollars deductible or something and 3, like that. Three thousand out of network. Yeah, and three thousand out of network. And and um, uh, it, it, you know, I never. I mean, she did because she loves going to her doctors. But I don't love going to well, doctors. Well, you you have one. You, I don't know. Every time I talk, to you, you say I'm going to be late coming home. I have a doctor's appointment. Well, yeah, I take care of it. Yeah. Anyway, you just complain. I just complain. So anyway, uh, so she hits her thousand dollars pretty fast, I would say. But it's out of your pocket, right? Uh, but I never, I've never had. I think once Oxford paid for something, and they pay for the. Uh, uh, the medicines, some of it, not all of it, and not all of them. Okay, uh, this thing is a is a two hundred fifty dollar deductible per year for each, you and two fifty for me, and um, uh, we're paying about two a little over two thousand dollars a year for insurance. Wow. So, yeah. It's one hundred seventy seven dollars a month, and you know. Great for coverage, both of us. Great coverage, Blue Cross Blue Shield, better dental yeah. than we had, uh, with a dental plan that is accepted by more dentists than the old one, like our old dentist is, takes it. Can I roll? With not this? yet. <laughs> Don't do not get itchy. Okay. It's ten twenty six. I, I have to clear some things here, so let's keep talking. Anyway, so it's anyway. It, I got. I, we have a nice policy starting March one. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I really think it was criminal what they uh, what they did, you know. I mean, it, 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 let's be honest about it. it well, was, I wanted to do a formal complaint, um, but the agent said you can't because they get these flat rates. Oh, wait a minute! I forgot to turn. You know, I've just had the camera on me and not on us. I'm sorry. Oh, are you serious? Uh, well, I when I came over to me to time. show people. See, something. it's all about you. No, I just it I, is. I was, it's all I was about so ensconced you. in talking to you. I'm that, rolling over. That I forgot to do it. No, no, don't roll over. I'm no, over. don't roll over yet. <laughs> You've got two minutes before you roll over. That takes me two minutes. To no, roll no, over. don't roll over. Roll me over. I may as well have had the picture on me. Why? It was on me for about the last five minutes. I feel so bad about that. Here, half an hour. I'm rolling wait, wait over. Wait a minute. No, don't roll over. Yes. Don't roll over. <laughs> <laughs> don't roll over. I want to. I want to put you on the screen for a few minutes here, all by I yourself. I want to be on the screen. Here, I'm here, here, over. here. You go. Wait a minute. No, no don't, I'm don't, not. don't roll <laughs> over. Stay there. Stay there. Because now I'm going to give you equal time. Because I didn't have equal time before. So. So there. So look in the camera. See, they can all see you. Hi. See, see how pretty she is. Isn't she lovely? Oh, isn't she beautiful? Okay. okay. Well, no, that. not yet. Not yet. Oh, you really want to, don't you? Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Watch your rollover up between the screens. You'll see what happens here. This is this is clever. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Come on over. Come on over. Let me turn off that mic so that it isn't uh, there isn't too much echo going on. We got to turn the mic this way. No, don't do that. We got to turn it. I, it. Boy, I'm gonna open up the phones. Good. I don't think anybody. Please call in. Phil tonight, is. I am it, really tired. It's a fill-free night. It's by a fill-free night, so please. It's a fill-free fill night tonight. To call because so. it's a fill-free night. Yeah. So uh, don't. Fill-free. Yeah. Feel free to call. Fill-free. Fill-free to call. Fill-free to call. Yeah, uh, but no, it's a fill-free night, so we need uh, we need people to call. Brian um, yeah. and Jeff, where are you guys? Yeah, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It, they haven't had time to call yet. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm going to get myself some Bluetooth earphones. Uh, because this thing, I hate having a cord now. It isn't that long. And, uh, you know, I could put the Bluetooths on and then not uh, yeah. not have to. Yeah. So how do you like my new toy? What toy? The new toy. Which new toy? You got a whole batch of new toys. My And my Echo. What Echo? Oh, uh, that. The, that the, the, the yeah. Echo, Echo 2. Echo, no, it's called Echo um, Spot. Echo 2. Spot. The like second. this morning, she came in. I was waking up to my news, which I was watching. I'd rather from, watch it from on the Reuters. television, huh? I'd rather watch it on the television. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, kiddo. Well, see, what, no, what, you're going to go and leave me alone <laughs> before these people start calling. Not Would on you your please life. Please call somebody. Yeah. What? Don't beg. I'm begging. I I have a new uh, don't beg uh, policy. I'm begging. 
please. Let me bring my. Where are you when I need you? Let me bring the mine up like that too, like yours. There we go. See, we, we go. We're, we're, we're wearing. Isn't that we're cute? People. We're wearing matching, uh, hoodies. matching hoodies. These are from Pixar. Yes, they are. From our friend who used to work at Pixar, yeah. but doesn't anymore. Or he's he's, a, he's off on a sabbatical. He's been on a sabbatical for over a year. They're traveling all over. Yeah, well, place. you know, you know why that work is in, can drive you crazy, and it knocks can you drive out. you crazy. Anyway, so we're waiting for people to call now. In case people don't know how to call. Tell them how to do it. Now, I have you, no you, idea. So you, that's your we, thing. You, we, we prefer that you use Skype. And if you want to know how to get Skype and how to install it and all of that, it's a very simple primer tutorial on the right-hand side of gabnet.net, G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. It tells you where to go get it. It even has a place where you can click and go to go get it. And then you get it and you download it into your computer. And then it's very simple to load in. And then you just give me your first name, last name, uh, an ID you want to use, and also your email address. It doesn't cost you anything. To call us doesn't cost anything. And it's very simple to do. Now, I wish thank I could you, show Louise. you how simple. What? What do you? I thank Louise. She said they're cute. That's how newlyweds are. Is that what she said? Yes, she did. Okay. Oh, ah. Thank you. Where has he been? He, he, here's, here's Rob Alfano to, oh, save, to, save, to, save, to save, save the day. To save the day. Wait a minute. He's whirling around there. Hold on a second. Uh, where, where? Come on. There. Ah. Oh, there's a picture. Nice try. Right. There, there we go. Is. There you are. With my favorite <laughs> microphone. I'm the first one on, huh? You're yeah. the first one on. Yeah. And I'm yeah. leaving early tonight. Oh, boy. This kid is tired. Uh, long week. Yeah, yeah. How was your week? Long week. Really? Exhausted. Yeah. Long in what respect? You had a lot of work to do? Uh, just, yeah. You know, come come nighttime, boy, the last couple of weeks, Yeah. finding it difficult to stay awake. Really? Like poop out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm the same way, but I have the show to do. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, so yeah. it's different. Uh, this morning started at like, you know, 645. I had a guy come this morning and he put a, a whole house humidifier in. Uh, what? A whole house humidifier. Oh, humidifier. Yeah, okay. because it's just too dry in here. What a difference. Just uh, he did it. He finished around, I don't know, maybe 10 hours ago. And it just a complete difference. And, and where did it, and it's a whole house humidifier. So does he hook it up to your air conditioning or something or he hooks it up to the heat plant downstairs yeah. and uh, the water supply because it's constantly spraying water into the yeah to the heat system as it blows the heat. It makes steam and it sends the steam up into the, the vents. Now, you might want to turn that off come summertime, right? Yes, you do. Right. Because then yeah. you have to go in and have them put in a dehumidifier. Yeah, no, there's enough humidity for the for the summer, but yeah. uh, for the winter, it's been less than it's been around twenty percent, and boy, you, it's just brutal, and it's destroying the house. I mean, the walls are cracking. We're seeing like the wood floor separate from really? all the wood drying out. Really? Can't, yeah. Wait a minute, isn't that isn't that the fault of the people who constructed this for you? No, it's it's hot, forced air heat. Yeah. So it's all dry air. Right. It's uh, there's oh, no wow. it's not like radiators or, you know, that kind of thing. It's dry, forced air heat. And that's what it is. And with this cold weather, the heat's been running so much that the humidity in the house has been so low for yeah. a month and a half. Wow. Luckily that uh, we have the one year inspection at uh, in uh, right around uh, September. They'll come here and they'll fix all the walls. They'll fix all of the cracks. They'll fix all the, they plaster everything. They fix everything. Oh, oh so the, the people you bought it from or, or who yeah. did it for you. Come yeah, the back. company comes and fixes everything. They give you one year for the house to settle because it's a new house. Oh, I see. And so where they see that it's settled, maybe there's a crack here or a thing there or whatever, they, yeah. they clean it up and, and make it look, that's fine. That's great. Yeah. You know. You're certainly getting your money's worth. That's for damn sure. Yeah. You know. This uh, year especially. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, 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 the thing I'm, I was wondering is, uh, uh, like here, I don't have trouble with humidity because no, we have kind of radiators. Heat. Yeah. And radiators have, uh, you know, moist heat. Yep. And uh, so I never get the feeling of getting dry. But um, 
You know what I love, though, about radiators? Have you ever lived in a house with a radiator? Yeah, sure. The, the, did yours make noise? Yep. Yeah, I love it when they go clank, clank. when it's clank. a cold winter night, and all of a sudden I hear clank, 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 because yeah. I know the, radi the radiator's going on. Yeah. It's almost a soothing sound. <laughs> you know, so. I remember being a kid, what's that? In my grandmother's house, she had an old house that was built in the 40s. Yeah. All all uh, radiators, and you hear that clank, 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 clank. What, what the yeah. hell? Because I grew up in a house with forced air heat like this. Yeah. Where so. is everybody? We need more people, folks. It's just it's just uh, uh, Rob and I. Of course, we could do the whole show together, right, Rob? Sure. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. You know, been very very weird lately. Some nights, four people. Other nights, full house. And there's no telling. Like usually on a Friday, there, there are more people calling at this point. But a lot yeah. of people listening, huh? A lot of people. Uh, could it be? Listen. It could be a lot of people viewing. We get more people watching on YouTube than we ever did on Facebook. I mean, at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, it's 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 okay. You know, it's all right. But if if nobody wants to call tonight, I can, oh, wait, he's tired. I'm tired. We could just talk for the next twenty minutes and then call the whole thing off. You know. You do that. Um, so, um, uh, did you watch any of the Olympics at all of the opening ceremonies? You know what I watched? I watched. I I love real sports with Brian Gumble on yeah. on HBO. Yeah. And I watched the new one, and there was this report mm -hmm. they did on the USOC, mm -hmm. this corrupt, horrible organization that takes in all this money and doles it out to all these CEOs and all these executives who work for these, there are organizations underneath that control different sports, like, uh, you know, oh, I'm hearing yeah, feedback. Uh, you're hearing feedback? Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's gone now. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. there is all this money that comes in and the athletes get zero or next to zero they they profiled a couple of guys who are skiers and one of the guys is a plumber yeah the guy is uh is is fixing automobiles yeah and they're barely making ends meet another guy was like in seventy thousand dollars worth of credit card debt trying to you know make this happen yeah it's another corrupt organization like fifa like the ncaa right F the Olympics. Well, no, but you know something? It, leave it to America to be able to somehow con people or to make money off of something where they're not supposed to make money. You know, I mean, if you want to talk about the corruption, just look at this whole thing with this doctor, you know, and and the athletes, you know, that this this was yeah. a lot, this was all just allowed to go on. It yeah, went on. Not, they're not any different than the NCAA with the whole uh, Sandusky thing. It was hidden. Now they're going to find out who knew, and they're going to go after the people who knew who knew and didn't say anything about it. And yeah. good for them. Going back to these athletes, yeah. these guys can't even. You know, they put on. One of the guys was showing that they when when it's when the big cameras aren't on, they get money from sponsors. So they put on temporary tattoos on their bodies, on their arms and stuff to like, you know, show off the logos. Well, when they go on television for the Olympics, the, the, the USOC makes them cover all that. They can't even make money doing that. Well, isn't there, isn't it, there is supposedly something where you're not supposed to really, the athletes aren't supposed to make money. Am I right about that? I mean, they're supposed to be yeah, amateurs. But, amateurs. But, but, but. You need, you need expenses. But wait a minute. But that is violated. Now, I'll tell you where it's violated. We, we, we um, field a basketball team at the Summer Olympics, and oh, every yeah. one of them yes, are what? They're, they're professionals. So apparently you can be a professional. Whatever makes money for the USOC in the Olympics is, you know, if you go Google the Beijing Olympic camp, yeah, you see what you see. It's just a bunch of abandoned buildings, grass growing everywhere. This goes on in all these cities. The Olympics is a big joke, and I won't spend two seconds watching you, you it. You know, if we were talking about this in Europe right now, we'd be talking about FIFA. 
Yeah, Fife is the same way. It's another Fife. absolutely Fife insanely play. corrupt organization. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's people making money off the backs of these athletes who get nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Fife, I think the soccer players make good money. Many of them. Not all of them, but many but of them. Not the NCAA and not, um, and not the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you're, if you're a gymnast, you get raped. You know, I mean, or fingered or whatever that guy was doing. You Little know. of everything. You know what I watched today? I watched a documentary on Netflix they have on Gloria Allred. Mm-hmm. Now, I've, you know, I've never had a, a positive opinion of Gloria Allred because uh, she always seems to be like, she always seemed to me to be an ambulance chaser. And when I watched this documentary, it wasn't, it, it was warts and all. Mm-hmm. I came to really appreciate her and the work that she's done for women and for the rights of people of, of all sexual bents. I mean, what she's done for, uh, uh, she was there for the transvest- uh, transsexuals, you know. Uh, she was there for women's rights. She was there for the women in the Cosby case. But this, she goes back, you know, 40 years with this. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, is, uh, you know, has always stayed t- stayed true to her causes. She has never wavered in her beliefs. And um, it's really a fascinating documentary about the woman. You come away with an absolute respect for her. Hmm. And I'll have to look out yeah, for that. So it's, it's, it's on Netflix. You have Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. I look for documentaries. All. I love documentaries. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the CNN has got a big one coming up starting Sunday night. It's that uh, it's a it's a six part um, on what's her name? Um, the 1974 Symbionese Liberation Army. Oh, Patty Hearst. Patty Hearst. Yeah. Got a big thing coming up. I'll watch that. Uh, didn't that, what was it about that Patty Hearst thing, though, that I are they doing it as a documentary? Or are they doing it? I thought somebody was doing it as a docudrama. Uh, it might be a docudrama, but it it does it is s- supposedly steeped in fact. It's not um, embellished too much. I, I'm looking forward to it. She is the perfect. I remember it, uh, and it was you know I just started radio, college radio, and I was doing the news. Yeah. That's how I started, and I remember reading all the stories about Patty Hearst. But that I, I didn't pay too much attention to. She's the perfect. 18. She is the perfect example of Stockholm syndrome. Uh, where you start to feel empathy towards your captors in order to survive. Yeah. You know? Well, and they and, gave and, her a rifle. They gave her a rifle and taught her how to use it. Yeah. Yeah. So she made. Yeah, she made friends with them. Yeah. Now you know the question is: Was she? Were they able to do that because she was because she was smart or because she was dumb? I mean, she, apparently she was pliable. Let me put it that Some way. Some people believe that she was a part that that whole thing was a was a was a setup, and that she was planning to do this, and that she was kidnapped in her own. She knew it was going to happen, and this is something she wanted to do. There are those who believe that. Well, I was involved, as you know, with the with the the left, uh, the radical left, when I was doing radio in New York, and uh, I got a call from somebody who said. You want an interview with Patty Hearst? This is really? when she was on the. This is when she was on the run, and mm-hmm. I said I wouldn't turn it down. Yeah. And they said, "How much money you got?" Oh, fuck. And I said, "I don't pay for an interview. You yeah. know, I'm not going to pay for an interview because that makes me complicit in the crime." Sure. Um, and uh, they said, "Well, you know, they indicated she was in New Jersey." And that if I could come up with some money or some kind of deal that would make them happy, she would be willing to do an interview with me and they would take me to a secret location and whatever. And I, uh, for a while, I wondered whether that was completely legit. And then I found out that at that exact time, when she was caught, but at that exact time, she had been in New Jersey. Was this, you were, uh, was it, because this, this, she got kidnapped in 74, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So was this? Uh, I was. I was. I, I. I started working here in New York in '69. Yeah. In '69. Yeah. So it was. So you, it, it you was while. At PLJ. I, yeah, I think I was a PL, Yeah, I was a PLJ at the time. So it was around. You know, it was around '75, something like that. 
I can't remember how long she was kept captive or supposedly captive. Well, the question is how long she was captive and how long she was. I mean, obviously, she didn't run away. Okay, right. there wasn't a point when she said, hey, nobody's around. I'll leave. I'll go. Right. And that's the whole question about Patty Hearst. You know, was she a willing accomplice? Well, they took her in the bank and she held a gun, right? And she made that speech, I'm Patty Hearst and you don't move or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, but I mean, that could have been done under duress, believe it or not. We don't know. We don't know that the gun had bullets in it. Let me put it that way. You know, uh, they could have handed her a gun without bullets in it and said, you're going to do this now. Otherwise, you're dead. You know, uh, you know that that much I'll give her. But then as it went on, I mean, she was in a situation where she could probably uh get away at any time. In fact, when they attacked that house, when the police attacked the house in, um, uh, in Los Angeles, um, she, um, uh, she was, I think, somewhere else at the time. And so she didn't get caught in the middle of all of that when they burned the house down and killed all those people in there. So if she could get away and just go driving somewhere and be on some kind of whatever, doing something, what was preventing her from just getting in the car and just keeping on driving all the way up to Northern California and dock at her parents' door and say, help, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, she never did that. No. She got... Did she go to prison. Huh? Yeah. She did she got, time in prison for she, it. She got caught, um, and uh, she did go to prison. And I did meet her on one occasion just briefly in that I was doing a... I uh, was in, involved in a comedy show. I think it was the one I did with, did with Robin Williams and Jerry Seinfeld and uh, Kevin Pollack and Dana Carvey. Uh, and uh, uh, we went backstage, and there backstage was uh, Patty Hearst and her boyfriend, who was her bodyguard. Hmm. And um, she just said hello to everybody. And, you know, the other people were like really having something to do with her. And of course, she was interested in meeting Robin and. Uh, well, Jerry Seinfeld wasn't a known quantity at that point, and right. neither was Kevin Pollack, and Dana Carvey was a local comedian. Uh, but uh, uh, that was the only time I ever saw her, you know. Uh, or And I don't think anybody's ever come close to interviewing her. I can't remember an interview with her yeah uh, uh about about the whole thing i mean because obviously if you're going to interview her you don't want to sit there and say so how's your marriage been and uh, how many kids do you have and where do you live now and uh are you you know you, you at some point you've got to say so let's talk about the kidnapping that's why she probably doesn't get interviewed because she probably says no to anything that has to do with that and nobody cares about anything else right so, right. There's no, no relevance there. So, you know, the question would be, oh, here comes Patrick. Ah, we're starting to build a little bit of head of steam here. Hello, Patrick. How are you? I'm alive. Patrick, I got an, an education today. You know, I was thinking, I never saw, I'm wondering, listening to you, I, you know, I listen even though I haven't been calling in, listening to you, and I started thinking, what is it like to drive a vehicle the way you do. And so I started Googling it and I found all these websites where they actually show you the controls and all that. Do you have one of those push pull things? Yeah, you, you push for brake and then you go down on your, toward your lap for gas. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. And, yeah, it, it is. and, and it's, it's completely safe, right? Well, yeah, I, 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 I've been driving like that for forever now. Yeah. So, I mean, and they're different type. There are motorcycle types where you can shift. Yeah. Fist, um, and that it, it depends on what you are comfortable with. Um, but that was the one they were given to me, uh, just a straight bar that you push in and push down. And just like when, if you're a passenger in a car mm-hmm. and you're seeing somebody coming up to the car in front of them too fast, your foot will depress on the brake that's not there. Yeah. My, my hand does that. <laughs> it, you know, I, I could be with somebody else, and my hand is trying to brake. That's funny. So, so, yeah, so my brain is wired to my hand rather than my feet now. For hey, there, uh, there, I, there's a great uh, Jay's. Do you ever watch Jay's Garage? I've yeah. seen it. Now. Yeah. Well, there was I saw it last night and he did an interview with a with a driver who was in an IndyCar car wreck and he became a 
quadriplegic, hadn't driven for like 20 years, and now he's driving again. And he's using this tube that he puts in his mouth. Now, I was going to mention that. Do you have a thing you blow into? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And then he's got these sunglasses on, and however he looks, the, the car turns that way. He moves his head, right? It's pretty cool. He was driving a brand new Corvette. It was a beautiful car. And he took Jay for a ride. And he's, you know, he's blowing in this tube. And Jay asked him, have you ever like run out of breath? He goes, yeah, I was going up this mountain. <laughs> blowing and blowing. <laughs> Ran out of breath. Well, wait a minute. Now, what, what, when he blows into the thing, what does that do? That, that puts the accelerator down. And then when he, when he goes, oh. he sucks in, that breaks. So oh. it's air. It's all done with oh, that, his mouth uh, and this that, Yeah, tube. that could be devastating. <clears throat> Pretty cool, though. Uh, you, don't, you. You, you don't drive when you've got a cold. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me that see. Uh, pa Jeff. So 60 years ago, a friend of mine had this car, his father's car, and it was the same system that, that, that you have now, Patrick. And it was pretty functional. It was a simple system. I'm sure it's the same kind. I mean, maybe it's more sophisticated now and maybe a little more simplified, but it worked great. The Once I saw it, they're actually physically connected to the brake pedal and the gas pedal. Yeah. Just and their, yeah. Everyone can drive my car. Yeah. You don't tell that to idiot, you know, because it, it's almost like a theft deterrent system. If, somebody <laughs> would, if, if you were... A punk ass kid, and you broke into my car, yeah, and you saw this bar. You really wouldn't know what the fuck to do, because you can't tell if you can put your feet on the on the pedal. When in fact, either one of you guys could get in my car and just turn the key and drive. Um, the only thing you have to remove. And I have a suicide knob on. I don't know if you guys remember those. Oh, I love those. When I was a kid, every kid who had a car, first thing he put in was a suicide knob. Which, in case people don't know what we're talking about, because I don't even think they make them anymore. You used to put this thing on your wheel that had a little, it had a, it was a knob. And it was a knob that would rotate. So you could then take, you could put one arm around your girlfriend or one arm, you could be jerking off or whatever and just drive with one hand because you'd be going like this, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're illegal as hell. But on my driver's license, I have an exception. I mean, on the back of my license, I've got all of these requirements and all these exceptions so right. that if I ever get pulled over, um, I'm, I'm allowed to have the hand control. I'm allowed to have the suicide knob. The only problem with suicide knob is if I were to get into a car accident, it probably could kill me. Um, Why is by that? Crushing my chest or if I bang my head on it, it because it it's an additional thing on the steering wheel and it's dangerous as shit. Why do you have it? What that? Why why have it then? Because I have to have one hand working the brake and the and the gas and the other on the wheel, well, if I can't get the wheel moving as fast as I want to, where, like you guys, if you're driving with one hand on the wheel, yeah. and you get to a situation where you got to do two hands, you can quickly do it, because you're working your brakes and your uh, gas with your feet. I can't do it, and I could get into a lot of fucking problems, mm -hmm. so... I just, well, I, mean, I, I remember the the one bad thing. I think the reason they made them illegal. Hello, Kevin, by the way. Kevin's joining us. Uh, the reason they made them illegal was I think they had a tendency to sometimes get caught in the cuff of your shirt or whatever. Uh, and that could cause accidents. I, I, all I, the only reason I <coughs> suicide not to pay illegal is for the same reason that I'm telling you for me. Yeah. You just get in a car accident, you could crush your chest. Yeah. Beyond crossing your chest on a steering wheel. Yeah. Plus power steering. Power steering was, a, they, were, they were more for non-power steering. Well, right. That's what they were made for. Yeah. yeah. Buses used to have them. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, big know. trucks. We used to put them on our big trucks. Right. The semis. Yeah. Can yeah. you uh, can you set the cruise control? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I do all the time. Yeah. I mean, when I'm on the freeway, I hit the cruise and... 
at night because then I can get my hand to break, you know, off the uh, gas and, the, mm-hmm. and let it sit on there. Yeah. So, yeah. By, the, by the way, Jeff just gave us a tour around his house. Uh, uh, that's so cool when you're walking and you get the camera. It looks really weird. We, you, your audio isn't on. Your uh, sound isn't on. We can't hear you. Uh, yeah. Turn something. Uh, there you okay. go. There you go. Yeah. This is not my house. <laughs> that's not your house. Where are you? I'm in Florida right oh, now. Oh, you're in Florida. <laughs> nice. Oh. When you started that trip through the house, you were actually in Connecticut, and then that's... you just wound up in Florida. <laughs> Oh, so what are you doing in Florida, by the way? And then we'll get back to the suicide knob. What? Yeah, this is uh, my sister's, uh, my, my wife's sister. Oh, okay. And uh, we came to visit her and see how she's doing. And and she's got this beautiful big house and plenty of room. And yeah, that's nice. Comfortable. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's terrific. And you know what? What? It's nice and warm down there. Yeah, yeah we'll so, or, and you and, and you know what, Jeff? Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> Today again, it was it was it was twenty eight, and 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 I see with this echo now, this echo spot with the TV screen on it that I bought, I can just say to it like, "What's temperature right now?" And and the, they add, the picture actually comes up on the screen, I you know, know, with either rain or whatever, and and the temperature. Uh, oh, the new echo, the the this the video version. Well, this is the video version, but this is not the big screen thing. It's a little like the ball, and it's got a screen in it. Oh, and it just fits right by the side of the bed. It's perfect for the side of the bed. It's smaller than most clock radios, and it has that same function plus a lot of others. I could tell, wake me up in the morning to the news, and I would, time would come and it would wake me up. You know, it's really, it's good. I can, I can call you. I could say, call Rob Alfano and it will call you. Oh. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's terrific. It, it, I, I love Amazon. I think they really came up with a, a good deal there, but then they got the Apple home pod, which Renee last night, was it last <laughs> night said that she had bought, it was buying one. And I said, well, you know, there's a sucker born every minute because, <laughs> Yes, the sound is supposed to be terrific on the HomePod, but that's about all it does. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, ha- it, to begin with, it has Siri. Now, I don't know about you, but most people agree that Siri sucks, that it started out being the first artificial intelligence that we had in a phone, and now it becomes the most stupid artificial intelligence we have because it doesn't understand a fucking thing you say. <laughs> You know, I mean, Google got it down. Amazon has it down even better. Very rarely does my uh, Amazon Echo ever get me wrong. You know, so um, sometimes it can get frustrating. But but the fact was somebody reviewed the, the HomePod today and said it's got a long way to go before it's as good as any of the other things that are doing the same thing. I think Google has one. Uh, Amazon has one. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it's just, it, it, uh, it, it, but the sound is supposedly pretty good, but they say it's not as good as if you bought uh, two Sonos speakers and use them. Uh, so uh, it, you know, what do they run like 400 bucks or something? Uh, $340, I think. Oh, well, you know, I mean, come on, you know. Um, I, and I love, I just love the echo. It does what it, I don't care if the music isn't the highest fidelity, okay? Because I don't use it for that, except like when I'm eating dinner and I want a little background music, and then it sounds just fine to me. Yes, Patrick? The only speakers I give a shit about are the ones in my car. Uh-huh. So when I'm listening to music in mm-hmm. the car, mm-hmm. that's where I mostly listen. That's where I want it to sound good. Yeah. The rest of it, I don't care. Well, I, I don't... mean, it, 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 yeah. right if I put my iPod through my Bluetooth and my hearing aid, yeah, it, it sounds fine. It's good enough for when I clean my apartment or whatever. That's mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Well, I don't use. Uh, I don't. I don't listen to music much at home. I mean, what I do most at home is watch TV, and we do a lot of that. You know, uh, 
because between all the things you've got now, between the Netflix, the Hulu, the HBO, and quite frankly, is HBO doing anything lately? <laughs> I don't, you know, it seems to be all Netflix, you know. Uh, uh, between all that stuff, there's a lot of TV going on. So, you know, we're, we're, we, we get involved in that. But let me, uh, let me, uh, let's go to some of the topics du jour of the day. Mm -hmm. I was mentioning the Olympics tonight. And the fact that uh, that uh, uh, Mike Pence was there, and he did an interview with he did an interview with uh, Lester Holt of NBC News about it, and um, he what is that rumbling? Is somebody moving their microphone around or something? Oh, oh, ah, Kevin, Kevin, it was Kevin. I know, knew it was you, Kevin. Or wasn't it? I don't know. Anyway, anyway. Uh, and he was talking about, well, we should, while we're here, you know, we should let everybody know how horrible North Korea is. And, you know, I'm telling you, that's not what the Olympics is about. It's not there to go and wage your little battles. It's to go there and for a moment take a breather and have some peace. And, I mean, who is exemplifying that the most? I think it's the two Koreas getting together and fielding one team. And I think that's that's wonderful. But somehow he was there to not not go along with that. He didn't think that, that wasn't good, right? And he's then in the stands, and I don't know. I mean, they could have put him anywhere in that. Well, the, I, I know from having gone to Olympics that there is a certain stands that all the uh, 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 dignitaries from the various countries are placed. So they're all next to each other. I mean, when I went to the Olympics in um, in Barcelona, I looked at it, and there there was Castro, and there was you know there was all all these leaders from around the world. Uh, but uh, they could have done a slightly better seating job because it's a pretty big stand there with has all the dignitaries. They put Pence right in front of Kim Jong Un's sister. And do you think that son of a bitch would turn around what, and shake her hand it, it, or something? No, no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't the, because the, uh, the fact he, was he, that he the, the woman and he had the exactly. opportunity because the the uh, what do you call it the uh, the head of South Korea turned around and went up to her and shook her hand and said, you know, welcome to South yeah. Korea, and you know we we're yeah. glad we're all taking part in these games and so on or whatever they were saying to that effect. Pence didn't even turn around. No, it, it was like he pretended like there's, you know, did you, did you see a dog? No, I didn't see a dog. Did you see a dog? Yeah. Remember that commercial? Um, <clears throat> uh, he just wouldn't recognize, and it would have just been nice for a moment, in the name of international of peace, to just turn around and shake her hand or at least acknowledge her existence of being there. Yeah, in the spirit of the supposedly right good sportsmanship of the Olympic Games. It, right. Just take five two minute break. Right. Exactly. I was watching. I was watching it just a few minutes ago because it's just playing over here on the West Coast. And I was just saying to my wife, I was going, you know, at least the South and the North Koreans are showing a little bit of peace, and they're playing, singing "Imagine" from John Lennon, and they're shaking hands, and they're, you know, grabbing they, the and cauldron they, together. And they, and they also and flew. Their, they flew under. They they walked under one flag. They walked under one flag, and they're holding the the flame together. But do you see anything like that? We're just sitting there saying, we're going to take away your fucking money. You know, that's all they're saying. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's 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 embarrassing. Yeah, it it's was. Totally embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know. I think it would have been a terrific advantage if he had just shook her hand and say, nice to see you here. Yeah, yeah, but she's just it or or been, or it it's, it, it's, it's it, wonderful of you to come. You she's know? Yeah, something easy. Right. She's single woman, can't do that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's got to put a sheet oh, yeah. on her and yeah, and cut a hole. Too. Maybe he can get a hand through it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. you're right. He's that way, isn't he? Yeah, he's that way. Yeah, idiot. They'll accuse me of touching her pussy. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> You could have worn gloves or something. The rest of the White House can go to hell, right, with all the shit that's going on. But yeah, he can't. He can't. God forbid he talks to well, a single woman. You know, uh, there are it, that bothered me a great deal. I just thought that it was not a good representation of us. Uh, maybe he was afraid that he would, if he did that, he would go back home and 
Donald would ream him out for doing. Yeah, he'd get his peepee spanked or something. Yeah. You know? It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, grow up, you know. Uh, um, but anyway, so that that was that. Okay, oh, here comes Mark Green. Um, that was that. Um, hello, Mark. How are you? Mark, you there? Yeah, hi. How oh, are you? hi, good. Did you see this thing with Pence tonight with the not uh, not saying hello to Kim Jong Un's sister? Well, I, I, think I, 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 I know uh, what you're By talking the way, move your cam, move your camera so we can see a little, little more of your face. It's kind of like you're only partially in face here. Just move. Okay, yeah, I can't yeah, tell. yeah, yeah. Just no, move it, move it so it's down a little bit. There, you, there, you're getting there. You're getting there. No, there. Now it's not there. You can't see yourself in there. Well, well, I gotta get rid of something here. Yeah, just so you can see. But anyway. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, we good. Go. Oh, good. Perfect. That's terrific. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, did you see that whole thing with Pence and the uh, and the? Uh, uh, well, I tell you, the, the people I know that would that would like, maybe uh, agree with Pence would say they all look alike, and you really didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh boy yeah yeah i mean it 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 was it i just think there was something quite wrong um with uh with not acknowledging her you know and well, i i i you, you know you know exactly what it is that's what that's the trump thing but you know what they were doing they were they were giving him i i said to myself well, why did they sit her there and him there and it then hit me that probably they were doing it as a nice thing because he was sitting right next to the South Korean president, okay? And so that was the preferred place to put dignitaries, all right? And so because that, if he had put Pence way over on the other side of, the, uh, of that, that group, uh, he, would have, he would have probably felt insulted by that. So I think there was a certain political thing saying, hey, well, let's put him here because he's got to be next to the president. Well, he's going to be in front of the someone. Well, he, he'll live with that. No, he won't. He's an asshole. You know, so. Well, it's, it's, it's why is it Pence there instead of Trump in the first place? Well, you know? yeah, well, I mean, Trump wouldn't go to that thing because, number well, one, Trump yeah. doesn't want to travel if he doesn't have to. And secondly, I it's think not he. not the Trump property. I, but I also think he, he would be afraid to go there because he would have to actually face to face deal with the North Koreans, somebody who's he's, he's been vilifying for the last how many last year? Yes, Patrick. And the same question be asked: Why didn't Kim go? Why didn't Kim? Well, uh, uh, you're right. You're right. I mean, it I, I, have, well, I was trying to <clears throat> I, I was trying to remember. Did, did Obama ever go to an Olympics? I'm trying no, to remember. I don't. I don't know if the presidents have ever gone, but I will say this much: if it was Pence and uh, Rocket Man was there, yeah, I wouldn't acknowledge him. But his sister, yes, yeah, uh, because she's not. I mean, yes, it's a political deal, but she is not directly involved in the government, for what we know, and taking part in all the bullshit. Right. So I think. An acknowledgement, even even short of a handshake, but you know, even a nod or a hello would be appropriate. Some kind of acknowledgement of a a, a a at least in the trenches, uh, coming out of the trenches for a moment, peaceful gesture, and then you go back to the trenches and you fight again. You know, but I don't think he has that concept. I don't think anybody in this administration has that concept. You know. I yeah. I think the other part that's very important is Korea was running the show. And, yeah. And, and there would be a very important part well, I would think, of us to yeah. recognize them. I would think that if Korea could, no, South Korea could pause for a moment and say, of course, North Korea, you can be part of our team. We'll be a team together then he should have turned around to acknowledge her, you know, because that was in the spirit of what they were doing. Uh, you know, come two weeks from now, 
you know damn well that Kim Jong-un is going to go launch another rocket. And this time he'll probably try and put a Tesla on top of it. And, uh, you know, and it'll be. And, and yesterday, before the Olympics, he had this big giant parade like, like Trump wants with uh, all the armaments of destruction traveling down the street while he was standing there with his sister there, by the way. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, I mean, in that respect, it's business as usual, but in Pyongyang, it's not. This is like, this is a moment of peace. And I, I, you know, I've been to Olympics before, and what I've loved about the Olympics was that sense of peace. Now, the other thing that we had tonight that was different was the Russian team. Uh, the Russian team wasn't allowed to compete as the Russian team. Why? Because of uh, their doping scandals. All right? So they were banned from this Olympics. So the, uh, the, United, the um, um, Olympic uh, Committee, or the Olympic people, whatever, came up with a solution for all those hard working athletes who have trained so hard to compete in the in in the Olympics from Russia who probably themselves should not be uh, given a penalty for having for their government having done what they did so they allowed them to participate under a unified team of of an Olympic team with an Olympic flag and so that whole Russian team was marching in front of, in back of a Olympic flag, and they are the, they were, it even said underneath, the Olympic team. And uh, I thought that that was an interesting solution to a problem. But Russia is not in this, in, in these Olympics at all. So, you know, uh, it, but every, everybody tries to come to some kind of peaceful accord somehow in order to make these things work. And I think, it, I think it's wonderful when that happens. And I, you know, I've been to, I, was, I went to two uh, Winter Olympics, and I gotta say, and I went to two um, uh, Summer Olympics. And of them, <coughs> the Winter Olympics, to me, were the, were the ones I will always remember, because it's just, it's, it's a whole different feeling than the Summer Olympics, because you're in a cozy little town and everybody's wrapped up because it's cold. <laughs> And uh, the spirit is really wonderful. I mean, uh, you'd walk down the street and somebody would say, where are you from? And I'd say, America, the United States. And they go, well, congratulations, your team won today, you know? And, well, who are you? I'm so-and-so. Oh, well, congratulations to you. I know that your skater won today. There's this feeling of camaraderie among all these people. And not this feeling of, we've got to compete and get all the gold and go home. You know, that's only for the leaders of these countries to brag about, because you can bet your life, if we take a lot of gold in uh, Pyongyang, you can bet that Trump is going to brag about it in some, mm -hmm. some you know, some posts uh, saying, oh, you know, look at us. We, we're number one. We're number one. Now, what do you think? What do you think about the parade? Oh, God. <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> Dumbass idea. I, I think they should have a parade. Yeah. I think it should be called the Presidential Porn Star and Prostitute Parade. Yeah. <laughs> they, sh they should have it on Valentine's Day to celebrate love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stormy uh, Daniels uh, should be the Grand Marshal. Who's that? Stormy Daniels should be the Grand Marshal. <laughs> yeah, she should be the Queen. That would be perfect. But uh, to have the parade that Donald Trump's talking about is it, just is just bizarre yeah. to, me, to me. Well, somebody said, I'm all for them having a parade if we're bringing the troops home. You know, the last time we had a parade is because we were bringing the troops home. I mean, the, the last thing troops want to do is, is march in a parade. Yeah. You know? They would rather be in the audience, like drinking beer and smoking cigarettes, and watching you walk down the street. Yeah, you know, it's 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 all about you know the guy with the bald head in the back. Yeah, somebody wrote here. Uh, Forbin wrote. Uh, Trump asked the Navy to drive a submarine in the parade. So. <laughs> <it's>, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> in the sewer system of D.C. No, but yeah. the idea of the parade is so jingoistic and so ridiculous and, and would cost so much. I mean, that money could be used for lots of other things. But, but he only wants it so he can stand there and have it go by him. And then yeah. he uses yeah, it. You know, but, the, but the cost thing, the cost thing to me is, is weird because the Defense Department just got like a, a, another $160 billion or some crazy number. And they want to use that to buy less effective nukes mm -hmm. so they can use them. Yeah. In other words, the nukes we have now are too powerful, so we can't use them so they're a waste. Can you believe that's what we're doing? Well, I mean, uh, the, uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, he, he used as his example of why he wanted a parade. The fact that he had been in Paris on Bastille Day and they held a giant military parade. And he wanted a parade like that. And somebody pointed out that he didn't even know what Bastille Day celebrated, which was basically the chopping off of rich people's heads. <laughs> Does it surprise you? Huh? Does it surprise you? You know, I mean, uh, uh, it's, it, it's amazing how he got, that's the only message he got out of Bastille Day. Was hey look a nice parade? We should have a parade like that in America. Yes, Jeff. In Washington, there's small parades all during the the, the whole year. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been down to Washington D.C. and all of a sudden you see the guys would come out. You know, there would be I don't know what yeah. twenty people or something like that. They would come out and march and open up. The, a couple of things and then leave you know it was, and you'd stop and watch it and it took I don't know 20 minutes the most maybe even less and and uh, he could do that anytime he wants I think he's doing like a hometown parade where you have like it cars is. that says Bob's Realty on it you know <laughs> things like that um, um, uh, Tyson Zacosta writes Trump is delusional and his parade is going to be a logistical nightmare there isn't enough room on Pennsylvania Avenue to accommodate uh, the type of parade Trump wants. That's right. you got to remember, all those parades that you see in Russia and you see in North <laughs> Korea are done in uh, literally on huge places like Tiananmen Square and so on, where there is that kind of room to have that kind of armament traveling down the street. Uh, the only kind of parades you have on, on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue are for like the inauguration and the president waves to everybody as he drives by. Yes, Patrick. Oh, well, we did. Uh, like I said the other night after the uh, Gulf War in '91, we did have a parade down Pennsylvania, and they had Abram tanks and they had the whole shit go down there. Um, so they can do it. It's just a matter of why. I mean, we did it well, back well, in '91 did... for the end of the war. It was a way to welcome the troops back versus what they got when they came back from Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. Why they did it to show the country behind the guys versus spitting on them. Yeah. And then we've had no reason under George W. Bush, Clinton, yeah. or Obama yeah. to have a parade for anything. And now, you know, this guy got an ego the size of, you know, whatever. And... It just, there's no reason for it. And, and yeah. I think a couple of us said the other night, if it's going to cost, I think, $22 million to do it, why not spend that money at the VAs, you know, uh, where it's going to do some good for the veterans and, and that sort of thing versus this. And like, you know, like we said, um, these guys don't want to fucking march anyway. Well, I'll tell you, this parade is like the fucking wall. It's not going to get built and there's not going to be a parade. I can guarantee you there's not going to be a parade. Plus, we haven't spent any money on infrastructure, and any bridge they drive over will probably fall apart. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello, Vernon Nunn. How are you this evening? I'm just fine. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you have your little little uh, co uh, Morse code thing there? You can. Here, here. What did you just say? See his radio I in said, the background. I said, see. 
Oh, you said C. Oh, that's just C. Now, now how would you how would you Morse code the word Trump? Oh, so you spell out the words, right? S O S. S O S. Yes. All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, I love that. It's uh, it's it's so it's a soothing sound. Probably last heard on the Titanic. Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it really was. It really is kind of. Um, uh, ridiculous that he's even deciding he wants to do that, but he comes up with ridiculous ideas all the time. Uh, it would be great if nobody showed all this stuff going on and nobody nobody showed up on the street. Just say there'd oh, still be a million people. Oh, there. still be a million people there. Don't you remember the inauguration? The, somebody, somebody uh, last. I think it was I was watching Colbert, which I don't do that often, uh, but he was showing uh, the inaugural parade and how one of the stands was completely empty yeah you know but i don't know that was the biggest inauguration ever you know so um i i just it was amazing to me did anybody see uh omarosa on big celebrity big brother yep and uh, it went huh she just pisses me off oh wait a minute hold on a second what were you saying patrick yeah, I saw that she was going to be on it, and I just saw a snippet of her um, saying that she she was the queen in the boardroom, and now she's going to be the horror of the TV or whatever. Well, no, she what she did was she she started confiding in people. Maybe this is a way to stay on the show forever because you want to hear what things she's going to reveal. But she said we're really in trouble. She said that whole White House is, you know, in bad shape. Well, she didn't. Amorosa didn't have to tell us that. I think we figured that one out for ourselves, didn't we? So, what do you think about? I've been thinking about that too. What do you think about all these Republicans and these people? Do you think that they're letting Trump do what he does so that he implodes, and they all they're all just going along with it, like you know she was saying? You know, <clears throat> he's doing this and he's doing that, and they're all telling her to back off. Because she, she was, let him do it, let him do it, and then he's just gonna slowly implode, and they're all just sitting back and just letting him do it, letting him do it, because they can't stop him. Well, it, it was it, it, part of the problem they've had here. Uh, the the present problem is that uh, uh, is is now we have our second person in the White House who has just lost his job for supposedly spousal abuse. Right. So now there are two of them. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, all this shit's happening, and, and, and nobody can stop Trump from doing what he's doing. So they're all just sitting back going, let the fucker do what he's going to do, and he's going to implode after a year. Well, the lawyers, the lawyers try to tell him, don't do that, don't do this, it's not good if you do this, it's not good if you do that. They are scared shitless, supposedly, of him testifying to Mueller because yeah. they know that if he opens his mouth somewhere in the first 15 minutes, he's, he's probably going to commit perjury when they ask him his name. So let him do you it. Know. Huh? Let him do it. Well, let him do it, but the lawyers don't want him to do it because they know he's a loose cannon. No, you know. they know he's a liar. Well, they know he's a liar, but he's also a loose cannon. If they tell him, like, if you're asked this kind of question, here's how you evade it or you refuse to say anything about it or whatever – that he is just not good for taking direction that way. Yeah, they could give him a script and he'd fuck it up. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, they're, they're worried about that. But the newest thing, of course, the big, the big scandal at the White House is all these people, now two of them now, where they've been accused of spousal abuse. And in one case, they covered it up for months. Wait a minute, Alex. If you, if, if you went to, to, to Mueller... And talked about what you've done the past year. Yeah. Would you have to worry about lying? What, would you have to worry? What do you mean? No. Would you have to worry about Man, lying? No. Not at all. So, so why should Trump? Because he has something to cover up. Because he's been lying all the time. That's correct. Right. Well, we. we so have... it's not a perjury trap. It's because he's a crook. Well, no, I, I, I think it's worse than being a crook. He's just a fucking 
liar. You know? I know. I know, but he should be caught. My point is, it's not a perjury trap when you lie all the time. No, it goes of around, comes around. Right. But, I mean, they're, they're just afraid. They don't want him talking. They just, they hello, hello, Ray, hello, to Ray, hey. hello to Ray, hello to Ray Renati. Uh, Patrick's Hi. got his hand up. Patrick's got his hand up. Yes, Patrick. Um, two things. Uh, one, I, I agree with Mark that it, it isn't a perjury trap. It, 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 it being asked questions and, and he just going to be himself and whatever that is, is going to happen. And the lawyers shouldn't worry about it because they're not going to be on the hot seat. He will. The other thing is, I was watching Fox News last night. Um, I was watching the five, and I watch it because there's the hot chicks on there. And, I know, and they, I know, I know. I, I understand, Patrick. They were talking about the before the second guy got uh, resigned. The first guy that resigned for the spousal abuse. Yeah. And one of the women on there was an attorney, and she said the reason it took so long for this for him to resign it when you go into a position like this quarter i think his name was yeah um you are vetted and you go through this vetting process that are uh, very very uh invasive in your personal life yeah. and if they find something like that out and you contest it then they have to go back and they have to reinvestigate which is why it took so long for him and he was able to get away with it because he denied that that ever happened. And then once he, because they interviewed his wife or his ex-wife as well. And she's the one who told them way back a year ago that um, he abused me, he did this, that, and the other. And once you contest it, then they have to go back through the investigation again. Yeah, but here's the, here's the situation. Uh, you know, of course, even today, Trump to the press said, well, you know, he has said he's not guilty, right? That he that didn't do anything. And we have to assume his innocence before we, uh, you know, uh, go along with his guilt or whatever. And uh, the fact is that he's so ready and willing to believe him over a picture of a woman with a black eye. The boohoo, the boohoo answer he gave in that press conference today. Oh, we, you know, I feel so sorry for him. You know, it's it's sad for him. Never said nothing about her, but he was boo boohooing him. Like I hope he does good in his career going forward. And never said but, nothing about but her. Off, or black off, eye. off book on this. You know, one of his staff, this Hope, what's her name? I don't know her last name now. Hicks. Hope Hicks. Hicks. Hope Hicks. Hicks. Was was hope, was was, was, yeah. fuck, was fucking this guy. And yeah. she was crafting all the PR releases for him to try and, and take care of this thing. Trump supposedly is very mad about that and is thinking of dumping her. Because, you know, he, he anything that makes him look bad, he gets rid of. And there's even talk that Kelly may be gone as a result of this. Supposedly Ke uh, Kelly re resigned uh, or offered his resignation, and Kelly denies that. Mm. But that he he knew about this whole situation and they were investigating it for the last couple of months. That's why the guy never got his full clearance, you know. Um, and uh, it you know I mean it, it's a clusterfuck because everybody's afraid to tell the king he doesn't have any clothes on. And uh, it, when you've got or employees, a, if you if you've got a bunch of people, I mean, God forbid, I would hate to have seen what the Trump Corporation looked like. Because if the whole Trump Corporation existed to keep this man's ego happy, uh, that's no way to run a company, and that's probably what why he went bank. Up. That's why he went bankrupt so many times. You know, he was not a, he could, did not know how to run a company. Uh, it, it what what who's run, using their microphone? Or making noise here? Okay. Uh, not me. The only reason I bring that up is that for the listeners out there, kind of may become disconcerting. Uh, so, you know, I mean, he basically is a bad manager. He doesn't know how to run a company. He's like Jack Dawson on the Titanic. Yeah. He's standing on the front of the boat saying, I'm king of the world, and he believes it. Exactly. Exactly. But he doesn't want anybody in there that tells him he isn't. 
Or that, you know, it used to be, they used to say that in Rome when they would have a conquering army coming home and there was a general who was the conquering general, he would be riding the chariot through the streets of Rome and people would be cheering him like crazy. And supposedly there was a guy on the chariot with him whispering in his ear, fame is fleeting, fame is fleeting. And if that's true, there should be somebody to tell this guy fame is fleeting. You know, you don't run the country at the service of your ego. And that's what he's doing. But it seems that anybody who has told him that has been fired and so that no one else says anything anymore. They just sit back. Well, and... that's what I'm saying. That's why he's a bad yeah. manager, a good manager. Yeah. I mean, like when I had several people working under me because I was doing a radio show, I would always tell them, look, I don't want people here yesing me and telling me, oh, you're wonderful and you're terrific when I'm not. When I do something bad, let me know. When, you do, when I do something you don't think works, let me know. If you think I did a shitty show today, let me know. The last thing I want are a bunch of people around me who are sycophants trying to keep me happy. Yeah. You know, because it, doesn't ser it serves me better if you're critical of me. You know. I think the and then, so they then all told me I was full of shit, and we went, got on with our lives. After I fired them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm I saying. Think the, I think the stock market crash hurt Trump. Well, he hasn't said anything away, about it. He was getting away with murder until everything went south. Well, I mean, he it, it, worse than that, he hasn't mentioned anything about it. Where's the tweet on this? Disappeared. You know, no, no tweet. Because there, there's nothing easier for a politician to do than cut taxes. You know? What's easier than that? Well, you and can't, he took not, credit for that and then said, look, look what I did for you people. Uh, by the way, he always, point, he always pointed to the stock market in that, in that speech he would always give about how good things were. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So that's why I think what's going on now is like, as you mentioned, the emperor has no clothes. That, has, this, that showed what, what the reality is. Yeah. And, we, and we now have increased our deficit by like two and a half trillion dollars. And, and all of a sudden, the Republicans don't care. Well, uh, if, um, Rob, you weren't on when I asked this question the other day. How much money have you lost this week? I don't even know. I keep my head out of it because it's, I, I can't, you can't pay attention. Oh, I've lost about $4,000. Yeah. You know, but, but it's, you know, I've got so many thousands more than I had a year ago. And my business manager said to me, if I told you right now you'd have this much money a year ago, you'd go, wow, that'd be terrific. <laughs> you know, so he said, that's, that's the way you got to look at it. But I mean, uh, he literally, I, and people say, well, it's not, it's not Trump's fault. I think it is. Uh, I think it, that there is a lot of fear in, in the market based upon what they're seeing going on. And these tax cuts don't mean shit to a tree. That, that, is, that, that is, maybe maybe that's scaring people away. The fact that we're going to add a trillion dollars to our debt from a guy who said our debt's too high to begin with is not a good sign, you know? So what do we do? Do Santa Claus. Uh, yes, Jeff. Did you notice that uh, your government money went up uh, about a month ago or something? What do you mean my government money went up? Hey, uh, Social Security? I, Social Security. Well, there's a yearly raise you get based upon the cost of living. I think it wasn't that much this year. I think it was only like about 70 bucks or something. I, I calculated it, and I think it's going to be 30 bucks a month. Oh, really? So I could maybe buy a half a cup of coffee well i mean it's it's a dollar a day Every other it's day. a dollar a day and uh, you know if, if you save a lot enough of that it probably after a year or so you'll be able to hire a hooker unless it's starbucks and then it's a cup of coffee a week yeah that's, that's a, right that's right uh and i think the hookers are 135 thousand dollars now so yeah <laughs> 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 Please do not refer, do not def, uh, play Stormy Daniels as being a prostitute. She's not. She's a porn actress. There's a difference. I'll let you know what it is. I don't know. You... I don't know what's. I don't know what the difference is. But, different, but the difference you, is. You know pro, more about that I do. A, I'll, a I'll prostitute. <laughs> a, a prostitute will have sex with anyone who has the money. 
a yeah. porn oh. actress will have sex with other porn actors uh, for money. And, well, and get so, paid a lot more so, than the guys do. Well, but it's not it's not a free not anybody can have her. You know, you and I would have to become porn stars before we could have Stormy Daniels. And even then I wouldn't want her. Uh yes, Patrick. I, I found out that a um, a well-known uh, former client of mine was arrested and charged with uh, soliciting a prostitute for $80. Oh really? Yeah, and I'm I'm just curious. What do you get for eighty dollars? The clap. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> besides clap or something. I mean, you know, shit. So yeah, that was that was kind of uh, surprising. A, another friend of mine that I used to work with alerted me to it, and I said eighty dollars. The fuck you get for that? Yeah. So. Yeah. A hand job. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Mm. I think it depends what time of the day it is, too. True. <laughs> true, true, yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway, I mean, it, it's it's uh, kind of, um, you know, um, uh, it, and then the other thing that got me is uh, today when I was watching this uh, Gloria Allred uh, documentary on Netflix, it shows the place where she went out and found all these women who had had sex with Donald Trump or had been, you know, abused by Donald Trump in one way or another. And there were like about nine of them, something like that. Uh, why hasn't that stuck? Why hasn't that been pursued? Why do people say, ah, that's just Donald? Well, that's what they did with Weinstein. They went, ah, that's just, uh, you know, that's just Weinstein. Yes, Patrick. Um, on that document, I didn't see it. I have no interest in anything that Alred does. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Patrick, if you watch it, you might have a bigger respect for her. Are you really? I, I, I got that. Yeah. I just, just, that'd be like me watching something on something. I just, there's something that won't let me do it. But anyway, in that documentary, did they mention a woman who was on an airplane with him? Um, because I had heard about it's got to be 18 months ago. It was before he was the nominee. I, I think it was right before. Yeah. There was a woman that was supposed to be coming out, and she had done an interview with named somebody. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and she had been on a plane with him mm -hmm. and had gone. He was either feeling her up or trying to get her into the I, bedroom. I or think, I, I can't remember all the incidences that were reported in this show, but I think that was one of them. Something okay, about something someone, happening on a plane and she sued him or something. Right, and that was supposed to be a big one that was supposed to come out about, like I said, maybe 18 months ago, maybe it was two years ago, but um, I had heard it on... Some, uh, on some radio show that I listened to um, back then, and it sounded like it was a sure thing. And I never yeah. heard anything more about it until, and I didn't think about it until you mentioned uh, this all red thing. Yeah. So that's why I was curious. Uh, well, you know, the trouble is with a guy when he's president, the one thing about Trump is by becoming president, he went behind this Teflon wall that protects him from a lot of things, at least for now. Like, for instance, I'm sure there are things about the running of the Trump Corporation that easily he could be arrested for, okay? But they're not going to do that because he's president. It's a little harder to do it while he's in office, okay? It should be easier to do it. You should be held above. Uh, absolutely. Because it's just, it's terrible what's going on. He hides behind the presidency and uh, we're watching people every day go down for different things, whether it's the Me Too thing or whatever. Yeah. We're watching people go down every day, and yet this guy is standing tall. Well, he's... He, it's absolute bullshit. He's out there representing this country and sullying its reputation. It's now, you, wanna, you want me to... Uh, I want to talk about something here. Uh, and I, I hate to say this about the guy because I, I suppose I should have a visceral hatred of Rand Paul, but yeah. I don't. Uh, he was the one guy in Congress who held up the vote to get this new budget approved. 
because he felt it was reckless. He said, this is going to cost us a trillion dollars more a year, and God knows we have enough debt already. And that's why he was holding it up. Now, I don't know why he caved in finally, but man, he was standing firm on this whole thing. He says, I know a lot of you hate me because I'm keeping you here till three o'clock in the morning, but the, this, this government is more important than you getting some sleep. It's all bullshit politics because he didn't say the same thing when they signed that tax bill that cost way more. I, I think he was not particularly for it, but I think they gave him something. Oh, well, they, you, you know, the give back because everybody else got something yeah. who said yes to this bill. But I but I, I you know, I had to hand it to him. It's not that I want to see the, you know, the, the government close down or whatever. But, you know, at what point do you say, folks, do you realize this is a trillion dollars? This isn't fucking monopoly money or maybe it has become monopoly money, you know? I mean, this is this is real money that is going to, you know, when the Chinese want their money back, we're in trouble. <laughs> Have you heard of the two Santa Claus scenario? Alex? No. Tell me about it. The two Santa Claus scenario goes that when Republicans are in control of the White House, they spend like drunken sailors. Yeah. So everybody loves them because they're spending all of this money. When they're not in the White House, they bitch and moan about the debt. Uh, they, That's they, the two they, Santa Claus. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Because, Rand I mean, Paul said that in his speech. He said we're only— He's the original. Rand Paul was an original Tea Party guy. He got elected when the Tea Party came into power in 2010. He used the Tea Party, but he, he, he wasn't exactly a Tea Party guy. He's always been a libertarian. Right. Okay. But the, a lot of Tea Party people were libertarian. Uh, yes, Yes, but I mean, he used he used the Tea Party and that that whole movement behind the Tea Party to get himself into office. Uh, there are times I absolutely hate Rand Paul. He's like got a smug look on his face you'd like to knock off. Uh, but nevertheless, he does something like this, and I think it, whether we say that hey he didn't do it before or whatever, it took some moxie to do it, you know, and because he was the one guy holding up the vote. Everybody wanted to go home. And he was trying to put a little fear of God into them by saying, you know, how can you do this and, and say that you're good with money? Well, I mean, if I'm the Democrats, though, I stand up and say, so where were you on the tax bill? Why is that money okay to spend? That's oh, yeah. way more money than this. Well, it, it, exactly. Uh, and where were you? I think right. the Democrats uh, folded like, uh, you know, Caved, caved uh, terrifically on all of that. You know, I don't think the tax bill was that that great a bill for the average American. Well, they're not. They're saying now that uh, the tax bill could be part of the reason why this the stock market's tanking. Well, let, then let me say to those people, you're going to get your you're going to get your your tax break, and maybe it's going to be two thousand dollars, but you just lost four thousand dollars. <laughs> you know. So, you know, there was a price to pay for that. You, how do you think, that, why do you think that the, uh, tax, uh, the tax bill caused the, uh, the stock market crash? And, and I'm going to call it a crash. They call it a correction because that sounds so nice. But it's really, it's a crash. I mean, we went down, what, 3,000 points or something in a matter of two weeks? That, that well, I, can, I can tell you, the, 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 US, the U.S. deficit is going to go up. The deficit, they have to vote for a, a new, to raise the debt ceiling again. So what does that do? Causes pressure on interest rates. Interest rates will go up. And the, the average guy got a buck and a half yeah. a week. Yeah. You know, and, and now, and now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So what do we do? I wanna, I, I, as I said, I wrote my business manager yesterday, and the notes simply said, "At what point do we jump out of the building?" You know, um, it, it, it's it was pretty bad in the last couple of weeks, and yet you don't hear a word one from Mister Moneybags, Mister. I look at all the money we're making. Look how good the stock market is doing. You know, nothing, nothing, nothing. So anyway, I th I think what he said for the last couple of months really heated up the market. It absolutely did. It heated it up. 
Yeah. What, what? Because the prices go up, 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 up for the last couple of months. And then... How did, but how did he do that? You would think... Well, Nathan... he, he told everybody every day that, that the market is going up and up and all the good are going to go yeah, but up. Then, but then why did all of a sudden did it crash? I mean, it and it took... I mean, this is a nosedive like they haven't seen because I remember last week when it went down... 1,100 points or something like that. They said this is the biggest stock market crash in history. And then the next week when it was slightly lower than that, they said this is the second highest crash in history. So in, in two weeks, we managed to gut the stock market of close to 3,000 points. The uh, stock market has gone down. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has gone down 40% or given back 40% of the gains that it has since Trump took office yeah. in one week. In one week, yeah. Uh, and, and today it went up like 330 or something like that, and everybody went, and, and that would have been a good day, you know, in the old days. Right now it's, uh, come on, a little more of that. Let's get some payback here. So anyway, it, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But uh, I, I just hope we're all, uh, uh, we're all safe and sound and, you know, I mean, we'll all we'll all be in the same soup line together. What the fuck? You know, except for uh, Rob, who's going to board the door to his house and just turn that into his own shelter from from the Trump storm. You know, go down there, watch movies all day and say fuck you to the rest of the world. Right, Rob? That's right. Fuck them all. <laughs> Didn't you say he went down there? He, he built a movie theater in his basement of his new house. That you went down there and you and your wife just watched endless movies one uh, over and over? And music concerts. I like watching concerts down there, too. Oh, really? Yeah. You mean concerts, films, yeah. or videos? What, wait, what's, concerts. All that, what's all that noise? What's all that noise? Who's doing that? Is that you, Vernon? I, I don't know. Not me. Oh. It might have been. Yeah, I, I didn't have my mic muted, and I'm doing something here. Oh well, when you, you mute your mic if it's going to make too much noise. Um, uh, so, so you like to watch concert films, if films or just videos of concerts? Could be anything. I, I watched uh, the HBO special on the the inductions to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It looked awesome. It sounded great down there. It's, you know, I like watching music down there too. Yeah, is it 4K or no? No, it's not no. 4K. Uh, because um, I got this new 4K TV set, and it's in the guest room, and it's just a sufficient size that it, it takes up my whole field of vision. So it, I, I, and then I got put in the surround sound, and it's great. But you know something? I got to tell you, it, the times change, right? Am I right or am I wrong? But was there a time when if you call, got a hold of Amazon and said, I just looked on Amazon, and it's still like under a month, and you lowered the price on this particular item I bought, 25 days ago, they would give you uh, some money back. Am I right about that, or am I wrong? Yes, I. no, you're right. I remember that. Well, yeah. I was told, I'm sorry we don't do that, seven days. A lot okay. of the things over at Amazon are starting to change. Like, if you say, remember when you'd ask for two-day delivery? Today is, what, is, is, is Friday. That would mean I would get it Sunday, right? If I click on two-day delivery now, that means I'll get it next Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, Alex, and I've also noticed that, that they'll, they say two-day delivery because it's my wife's birthday tomorrow, and it said two-day delivery, you should get it by Saturday. And now what I'm finding now is it doesn't happen. That You don't get it by Saturday. You get it like Monday. Well, no, they, even, they, though, they, I, even though they say you're going to get it, you don't get it. And I found in one case uh, that I ordered it, and then it said, it's coming Tuesday. And this was like on a Thursday. And I went, oh, wait a minute. That's wrong. It's supposed to be two-day delivery. So I went back and I went to the thing. And I it, it says, change delivery time, right? So I clicked on two-day. In other words, I changed it. But I clicked on two-day. And then when I went back, it changed it to two days. That You uh -huh. sometimes have to make a move to change. In other words, they would, and they're willing to give you like $5 credit if you're willing to take a slow delivery, which right. means yeah. like five days. Right. Uh, I, th I think, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I, well, I right. think that they partnered with so many outside vendors 
that you know they make these assumptions that the vendors are going to follow Amazon's rules, and then the vendors aren't able to do it, and then uh, they can't give you what they promise because the vendor doesn't agree to it, you know, on that particular order, or, or they just simply can't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Green, yes? Yeah, yeah. I got an off-topic question real quick. I'm going to San Francisco next Friday, and I need to get to Monterey. How do I get from downtown San Francisco to Monterey? Practice. No. Uh, it's an old... You want the scenic route, or you want Rent the... Rent a car. Yeah, take the coast... Is, take is the Pacific, the best way? Take the Pacific Coast Highway. I don't have a scenic car. route. Oh, route, you, don't, route. Oh, you don't have a car. No. You got to rent a car. There, there's no other good way to do it other than yeah. renting a car. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. What about Uber? Is that possible? Well, Uber? you can get an Uber, but it's, it's probably going to it's going to cost you expensive. Probably about uh 120, 150 bucks. And okay. that's one one way. One way, yeah. So if it's two ways, two hundred and fifty bucks. Well, it's one. I'm going one way. Well, what I'm saying, okay. So let's say it's a hundred because oh, that's why you don't want to rent a car is because right. you're going one way. Well, then what are you going to do when you get there? Just drown yourself in the uh, ocean? No, I we're mean, taking a, we're taking an Amtrak down to to San Diego. Oh, okay. oh, you know what else? You know what else you could do is get one of these zip cars that you get. Um, and I think you can leave it at Monterey. You know, Zipcar. Have you heard of this? The they're little, all over. They're yeah. all over the San Francisco. Tiny blue and white cars. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're the, like cars. That I are think you would do better. Lot. You and would you, do better. It would be here. Well, here's the thing I found. Uh, every year we go up to Vermont, right? And the girlfriend wants to rent a car and drive. And then we check how much it would cost to rent a car, and it's like for three, four days, it's seven hundred and fifty bucks. But then I looked and I said, how much if I want it for a week? And they said, 320. And I went, wait a minute, this, this doesn't make sense at all, right? It just defies my logic. I, uh, don't you pay by the day or whatever? No, if you take it for a week, it's 320, 350 bucks, something like that. It was half, at least half, okay? And so what we're going to do next year is we're going to rent the car for seven days, and we're going to go up and see our friends, and then we're going to go on to give ourselves a little extra vacation time and bring it back a week later. I mean, it's just, it's insane. So I know what he's going through. It's not that easy to just rent a car, because if you want to rent it for one day, it's going to cost a fortune. Yeah. So maybe Uber is the best idea. When are you coming in, Mark? Uh, a week from tonight. You want to drive him down there, Kevin? I live down here. You live in Monterey? Are you coming into San Francisco? Yeah. I'll hmm. give you a ride. I live near San Francisco. I can drive you down there. See? Because wow. I live down here. And I'm an Uber driver. <laughs> see the advantages yeah, the of see the advantages of calling this program, folks. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call early next week and figure this well, out. How, uh, do, how do, how Get does, your Uber how, reservation well, now, here. Now, now we gotta figure no, out my, my daughter in law has a conference in Monterey and my son's meeting me in San Francisco next Friday. So we did, we have to figure out how to get from Well San now Francisco. how does how does he get a hold of you, Ray? I, we don't uh, we can do it on Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah. Just go on Facebook. Do you I use, give you my phone number. I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Do you use, uh, do you use Facebook? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mark? Okay. Not, then, not often, but yeah, well, I'm there. Just look up Ray Renati and write him yeah. a note and say, you know, this is me. Or, or really? Kevin Stopper. Mark whichever. Green and and I, uh, you know, and and do it that way. That way we don't yeah. we're not going to give any addresses out on the air and. You won't have stalkers and people well, that's like that. Very, that's very cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I just looked up Uber X. One direction from SF to Monterey is between 160 and 214 dollars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's a train. Is it like, my, is it like 45 go miles? To Gilroy. Close? Oh no, no, it's pretty far. It's like uh, it's a couple hours. It's like two and a half hour drive. I had a friend from friends who had a private jet and we flew down to Monterey for dinner. Yeah. It took us maybe 30 minutes to get to Monterey. When we got back to the plane, the plane was broken. There was brake fluid, uh, there was brake fluid uh, seeping from the brakes and you don't want to take off in a plane with seeping brakes, right? So they had to then hire for the group of us, because there were about 12 of us, two limos to drive us back to San Francisco, which took close to three hours. 
Wow. <laughs> okay. They just made a point, too. There is that uh, Monterey Air Shuttle, I think, that goes up to SFO and comes yeah, down to Monterey. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, there are flights going to Monterey, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. fly, yeah. No, I mean, the, the they have a uh, the Monterey Airbus. Yeah. Well, let, let, uh, let uh, him get it's a hold, let him get a hold, to... let him get a hold of Ray, and, uh, yeah. uh, you, uh, or you can even write to him, uh it's Mark Green, right on on uh, Facebook. Yep. And he. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of Mark Greens. <laughs> uh, uh, there's only one me on Facebook. Uh, uh, no, one... that's on that's on me to, to find to chase it, them. Yeah, if you get in a bind, let me know too, Mark. It's Kevin Ray Trump. Renati, R A Y R A N. R E N R E N. I <laughs> see. I can't even spell it right. R E N A T I. R E N A T I. A T I. Ray Renati. Uh, and anybody else who needs a ride down, to, anybody else who needs a ride down to Monterey, uh, uh, give Ray a, 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 a yeah. tweet on the, on, the, on the old Facebook and whatever. Um, so uh, wh let me just ask one last question. What do you think was the most important thing that happened this week? Mm. I know me. SpaceX. SpaceX. It, exactly. How many would that was it, awesome? Would anybody I just saw that, that, live shot? of those uh somebody took a video of it and posted it of that that those rockets coming down my god those oh. things look like they were falling from the sky but do and you then notice, all of a sudden they just lit up and did, slowed did you, down did that you was see, awesome. did you did you see it, it awesome. did you see it rob did you rob i uh, no, i didn't oh these two things what's all that noise uh two things these two rockets came down but they were in synchronization and, you know, they've had a lot of trouble with those rockets not landing. But, what they, you know, they sent this rocket, a beautiful rocket, beautiful launch. You know, it takes off. And then the, like the, it's like, like a, a curtain call. These two rockets come and land. The, the two uh, um, uh, uh, booster rockets land on a launch pad. And perfectly it, synchronized. Perfectly did synchronized. You see, did you see it though? They looked like they were falling from the sky, full I, blast. I thought it was what it was. Get out was, of the sky, flying. I, yeah. And all of a sudden, they just went and they slowly yeah. dropped. Yeah. And what it looked it like awesome. to me when you watched it happening at the end, it kind of looked like somebody had reversed the video of a North Korean rocket launch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I thought. I strongly suspected, but I just think that. That was a marvelous moment for us uh, in uh, that in that uh, it was the biggest rocket we anybody ever sent up. It was done at a fraction of the cost that NASA does it for. And it could cost something like a, a half a billion dollars for the whole project from the beginning of it to now for it to take off. That would have been billions over at NASA. You know. And they would have wasted it. They wouldn't have landed the boosters. They would have just let it oh, fall it, into the ocean. Right, like exactly, do. exactly. Yeah. That's why so, NASA did it. So, uh, it he you know. did it out of his, his own freaking wallet. Yeah, uh, and it. Uh, I, I just think it was a, it was an amazing task, and I think, it, it again, another seminal moment for the human race in its, in, in its desire to leave the cradle, which I... Uh, and it, and it takes a guy like uh, like Elon Musk to do it. Good for him. Good for him. And I I, I love the pictures of that Tesla in space. It's yeah. just <laughs> incredible. It almost looks like it's CGI, but it's not. It's real. Hey, thank yeah. you to Jeff. Boy, we had a nice crowd tonight. Good talk, too. Jeff Stein, Patrick Blazik, Mark Green, Ray Renati, the lovely and attractive Rob Alfano, and Kevin, and of course, Vernon Nunn. And by the way, thank you very much, Rob, for the new promo, okay? Anyway, that's it, everybody. I think it'd be really nice if you'd wave goodbye and uh, say goodbye to the people out there. Yeah, there they are, folks. That's the Citizens Panel. That's the way they roll. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. Got to do a few things here. Close down the Skype line. Okay, I do that, and then I do that. And then the next show can use it, and everything is cool and copacetic. I'm Alex Bennett. I'm going to be uh, going off for a couple of days because we don't do programs for about three days. But coming up next is Jack and Amy. They're doing the intersection, followed very closely by Connections at 1 o'clock Eastern Time 
I'll see you right after uh, the exchange with Damian Chaplin on Tuesday. He'll be here at uh, 930 and I'll be here at 10. And uh, same time, as I say, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, she's asleep in the other room right now. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.